Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 290. <laughs> Jack's waving hand. <laughs> uh, I am Drawn Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Jim Black. And your mic is still muted. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Oh, now, now it's not. Now we can see Jack. <laughs> I thought I turned it on. Hi. And also joining us this evening is Donnie Mason. Hello. Welcome. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, uh, TF Expo in uh, Kansas City this year, 2018. And uh, uh, it's a new city, a uh, new town uh, for, for TF Expo. Uh, we'll be going into that a little bit. And the uh, Jack's computer switch over? Yeah, I got it working. Yay. <laughs> and now your video's gone. Aww. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Um, but uh, this episode is actually uh, going to be broadcast tonight. We are pre-recording it uh, because I'm actually going to be at work. So uh, Yay. It, it's actually recorded on the day that it's broadcast today. <laughs> uh, or, yes, I guess. Uh, but uh, for those of you ha who uh, have not heard of TF Expo, shame on me, shame on you. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you've been watching TFYLP for any length of time, uh, we've talked about it many times here on the show. Uh, we've had uh, the prior uh, uh, host of TS uh, TF Expo, Phil Searle. We had him on uh, several times uh, to talk about uh, TF Expo in previous years. Uh, now, Donnie, uh, I take it uh, that you've taken over the reins of uh, TF Expo. Is that correct? Um, no, not really. Uh, there's always been a group of um, organizers that's been involved with TF Expo. Phil was definitely the spearhead there for many years, um, and then he left in twenty after 2016 show. Uh, I've been an organizer with the group since 2013, so um, that's just kind of my role. And nobody else likes to do podcasts, apparently. So, <laughs> why they're so fun? I don't, I don't mind doing. I love doing. <laughs> yeah, this uh, I know. Phil, uh, whenever he was on, he always had a blast. Uh, yeah, we we talk about the show, and then then we're like, well, let's talk about toys. That's why we're. That's why the show sure. exists. You know, um, I, I believe the very first one that I went to. What year was it? Uh, uh, was it? I, I believe uh, Dan Gilvesan. Okay, so 2014, no, let's see, 2015. Was it 2015? That sounds that sounds about right. I went to that one and then the very next year, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which was, across, I think, across town uh, there. Yes, uh, and, and we had uh, David Kay. Yes, yeah. And Michael Bell, yeah. Um, that was, actually, I have the... Still have the uh, video for uh, the David K. Uh, interview uh, from there uh, up on, up here on YouTube. So after the show is over, if you want to check it out, head on over uh, to our YouTube channel and check out uh, the David K. interview uh, from a couple years ago. That was that was really awesome. Um, and I yeah, you know, I tell you what, out of all the conventions that I've been to. I find Kansas to be beautiful. I mean, just that whole area down there was it was gorgeous. And now you've moved to Kansas City, um, which is a huge place. I was blown away how, about how big that place is. Yeah. Um, and I guess that uh, is that the reasoning behind the move or part of the reason? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've been – the show's been going on um, for, let's see, seven years prior, and it's always been in Wichita. You know, it was put together by Wichita fans, for Wichita fans, and we just felt like um, after last year's kind of smaller show, we, we called it a, a mini con, um, we decided maybe to try and go bigger and bring back the full show where we have, you know, two voice actors, a comic book artist, and then also try a larger market. And it, it wasn't... Um, an easy decision or something that you know we made lightly we just we really wanted to expand the show i mean that's the only way we can grow is to expand our market share so that was kind of the idea behind it and it, there's a lot more amenities uh there in kansas city as well so well uh, I, I think there isn't there like a larger airport there too for if people yeah, want to fly sure. in 
So, like, if you're traveling, you know, it's cheaper to fly in there for guests and for attendees. Uh, you know, a lot of our organizers um, are from there as well. Um, me excluded. I'm in Oklahoma, so I, I have to travel either way, so it just doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, so it, it just, it's like when you used to get a BotCon at a really good hub, you know, that, mm -hmm. that was the place to go. And Wichita has been great to us. And um, a pretty town. I, I, I love it, it. It is a pretty town. That downtown area was fantastic. So, but we'll see what happens with uh, Kansas City this year. You know, we've got a really cool hotel um, lined out, Adams Mark Hotel. They've got a water park like attached to it. So oh, wow. that could be. That could be fun, and if you've got kids, you know, nephews, whatever you're bringing, that's a plus side as well. Um, so that's kind of our our thought process behind moving. Uh, well, you know, the uh, the first uh, year or so that uh, that we went, I the the va the vibe I got uh, from going to the show, it it did feel like a uh, a local con, but. Um, like potential to grow bigger that first year um yeah. i i got uh, well i i don't know if you got to go to uh, pete's robot convention last year um uh, it felt a lot like that it was small but yet um mm -hmm. you know there it had some draw to it um sure. and then the next year uh that i went with uh, the year that david k was there um it seemed so much bigger uh you know the, the, the bigger <laughs> The bigger, uh, the bigger room. Well, it seemed like a bigger room to me. I don't know. Um, I guess you well, we know. had to expand. We were in the Holiday Inn uh, in Wichita, there off of uh, Rock Road for I don't remember how many years they said they they did it, but I know I'd been there the year prior to when I went for sure. So at least you know three years, and we were growing, um, and and decided to move to uh, the Old Town uh, Hotel that year in 2016 and then we just it uh we just felt like we needed to make a move and so in 2017 there wasn't a lot of time to put the 2018 show together we did some transitions with phil transitioning out etc mm -hmm. um and so we decided man we'll come back in 2018 and go you know right back to being a big show and, and maybe even a, a a bigger cooler place as well so but well, it is by the fans for the fans i mean that's the root of tf expo mm -hmm. right like that's what we're all about. Well, I know a lot of a lot of people are are, you know, since the uh, since Botcon sadly has gone away, and then Hascon uh, financially isn't feasible for many many people, uh, yeah. and there's not even going to be one this year. So, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. it's you know people people are looking for that next yeah that next uh, con uh, TFCon. USA, it's it's there. I, I guess it, it it's become the heir apparent for uh, for Botcon awesome. because sure. because of its longevity and 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 Canadian uh, roots that uh, that have that date back many many years. Um, but sometimes TF uh, TFCon isn't exactly uh, you know it's it's around that time of year whenever you know, kids are already back in school. Uh, it's 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 hard to hard to make travel plans for TFCon USA. Uh, so TF Expo is a little bit earlier. It's uh, That's right. You want to tell us about that? Yeah. So the dates this year are August third and fourth. Um, again in Kansas City, Adams Mark Hotel. Look it up. You know, um, you can find tickets on Eventbrite for uh, for the show. Um, it's, you're right. So I won't talk any smack on TF Expo because I think or TF uh, Con. I think that's a great show, but we do offer a, a, su a summer alternative, um, something that you can get to maybe while the kids are out of school, and um, also for a lot of us Midwesterners that you know, it's a lot easier to travel to. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, and that that's the benefit, and, and a lot of people. They're reluct reluctant to come to uh, either new or smaller cons, uh, yeah. uh, and I think back to uh, 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 Chad Williams' uh, uh, Slagacon. Uh, you know, a lot of people were re reluctant to come to that simply because it was so small. But yeah. you know, I've been to small cons. I've been to really large cons. 
me personally, I prefer the small con. It's, uh, yeah. you know, one, you don't have to feel, you don't feel like you have to fight to get, get some of the good stuff out on the dealer room. Sure. Uh, sure. You know, you feel like you have more room to browse. You feel like you have more time to socialize, uh, not just with the, uh, uh, the fellow con goers, but the guests as well. The yes. guests are way more approachable. I mean, sure. David K. I mean, you, you could literally stand and talk for him for half hour. If, yeah, it, it was like, it was like crazy. And I remember uh, um, at the one at the Slaga Con, uh, the very first Slaga Con I went to. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Gary Chalk uh, was there, and he uh, came into the dealer room, um, you know, after his panel and, uh, myself and saying Galvatron, uh, one of the co-founders of this podcast, uh, me, uh, and him and a couple other people, we stood there and talked to Gary Chalk for almost two hours, you know, and, you know, people would come and go, he'd talk to them, you know, it, it just, and he would yeah. just pick in his brain about just random stuff. And then the next year, I think, uh, um, Scott McNeil was there and he'd go out yeah he'd go out onto the front stoop uh to smoke a cigarette and uh, with some of the other fans and he'd just be out there just letting loose and you don't see that <laughs> at like botcon or camp. yeah yeah it, so i'll say this about small cons is that uh so my first show was in 2013 as well that's the first time i attended and i am not a big fan of huge crowds like that's just one of my things and so i i really wanted to go to a botcon but the crowd's driving me crazy. It's just a, a anxiety that I have. And so I decided I'm going to go check out, you know, this local show in Wichita. It's three hours away. You know, it's not huge, but they've got two guests coming. That's pretty cool. And the lure of um, auto assembly, uh, you know, had always kind of intrigued me because yeah. they have that same kind of feel where they are able to interact with the talent and, uh, and, and really get to kind of know them, become friends with them on Facebook, and you know, it, so I should I should say that we are a smaller con, but we offer um, a more personal interaction with the uh, the guests. So, like, if you really want this year, we've got Greg Berger, for instance, who's a huge crowd pleaser. He loves to talk to people, and then we've got Casey Collier, you know, from IDW. Again, really cool dude who, you know just the greatest and you can just kind of hang out with them mm. and then this year i'm excited to meet with, so we are having a, a second uh, voice actor we're gonna have paul eiding this year first time at tf expo and uh, i look forward to meeting him i mean hanging out with suma lee montano i still talk to her every now and then mm -hmm. she's done some cool things for some uh handicapped kids in my area uh you know david k does some cool things on Facebook. I mean, it's just tf expo is just a whole different thing man it's it's its own experience and the bigger shows and, and even some of the smaller shows. It's just, it's, it's its own thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else can I say? I, I know, I, I don't know if you've ever got to meet Paul Lighting, but uh, uh, Greg Berger is a phenomenal dude, uh, and I, I will attest to him as well. But Paul uh, has a special place in my heart, too. I mean, he's he's been, he was there for me at a very, very rough time of my life. Uh, and for him to take time out of his day several uh, several times, uh, to just call me on the phone and wow. and, and talk to me and help uh, and help me through that uh, that time uh, showed me what kind of uh, of man he is. He is super special. He's uh, very convicted in what he believes and 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 does. And and he's That's his awesome. his work rate is is phenomenal. I mean, he's well. And what I love is because of TF Expo's, you know, I guess. Um, how it's laid out, I'll have that opportunity to kind of experience Paul Eiding in that, that light. So I'm really excited for that opportunity, especially hearing that. that and he actually, that. if I'm not mistaken, uh, after the David Kay uh, year, uh, he actually contacted me or, or it, it either, it, he either contacted me or it came up in passing. And, and he's, he's like, you know, I'd like to check that con out sometime. Yeah. And, here he is today, or Here you, you know, go. it's yeah. that's that's really awesome, and I'm I'm yeah. glad that he's coming. Uh, Jim, do you have uh, any questions so far? Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you said the uh, the other uh, voice actor guest this year was going to be uh, Greg Berger. That's correct. Yeah, who is a repeat guest for TF Expo, but 
we felt like with the new city, um, and again, his, he's kind of known, I think, in the community as just one of the best fan interactor yeah. uh, you know, guests. That and he also up. voices one of the most iconic characters in Transformers. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. very popular one this year too. So. Oh, you've been Grimlock. I, th- I thought you were talking about like Outback. Or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Outback, Jim. <laughs> uh, but no, that was uh, that was one of uh, Chad Williams' uh, first guests at at his first Psychocon uh, there in oh, yeah? and It was him, Daniel Ross, and David Sobolov, who was uh, Death Charge in uh, okay. Ninja Wars. And. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he's 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 real great. He'll he'll sit there, you know, just like you were saying with, with Gary Chalk. He'll he'll sit there and talk to you for forever and ever uh, as well. You know. For sure. Uh, I I remember when I first met him, um, I walked up to him and was like, "Hey, Nicole Hale says hi," and and uh, Nicole and I go kind of back several years, and and uh, you know, he knew who I was talking about, remembered her. And knew about it was at the time of her car accident that uh, a yeah, lot of yeah. people were aware of. And, yeah, it was what, about five years ago now. Yeah, and so like he remembers that though, and you don't really or me personally, I don't expect somebody who's kind of in the showbiz world or whatever to really you know who cares about these nerds that are coming up to get <laughs> signatures. And it's it's just not that way with with Greg Berger, and it sounds like also Paul Eiding. So yeah, they're very very down to earth people. Yeah, very approachable. Yes, they are. Very approachable. I'm excited. Very excited. Uh, Jack, uh, do you have any comments or questions? Um, no video. I think Jack. the only one I really have is uh, how many people do you guys usually draw for TFX Ball? Good question. So uh, part of the reason that we changed market was we were topping out at about um, anywhere from 200 to 300 attendees, and so we're really hoping to. Uh, have the opportunity to expand that with the new the new market. And what what happens there is uh, when we have more attendees, that creates more revenue. Like none of us take any money out of TF Expo. We're not making anything. You know, we always pay in every year. It seems like. But with a bigger attendee uh, uh, rate, then we will be able to afford more guests the following year. And that's really the goal is we want to have that kind of smaller botcon slash TFF, TFCon uh, 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 version in the Midwest. So um, a lot yeah, of people need up. to need to realize, too, botcon started out very small, too. I, uh, I believe mm-hmm. uh, I forget what the, the original numbers for botcon were, but they were down in the very low hundreds. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was, was going to say about, about two or three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was in what Fort Wayne, uh, yeah, Indiana. Not far from here. That was up in oh, Indiana see. at the Grand Wayne Center. Let's see. Yeah. So it, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. And if That's you right. if you if you start something good and snowball it, uh, then you know it can become another TFCon or even bigger. You know, or even bigger than BotCon. Yeah. Uh, not that I <laughs> want that to happen, but it would be great be- to at beast. least be able. To- not to worry about who we're inviting, you know, so mm-hmm. we're excited. Well, and you've also been around long enough, too, that uh, that TF Expo has got a name out there now uh, yeah. for, you know, you can you can say, okay, we've had these guests before. You know, Greg Berger's been on now, tw- uh, will we'll have been on uh, to the show twice, uh, you know, and that goes a long way. Uh, to bringing in future guests, like we've had repeat guests, we've had these guests, uh, you know, and they'd be more inclined, I would think, uh, to to come right. to a show. Yeah, you so you showed uh, stability and consistency, and, and that's really our our goal as a show. That's why we had a show last year. We debated, or a, a mini con, I should say, last year because we debated with the change. Well, maybe we don't do 2017. And the main concern was, well, if you don't do one, then even though we're not going to have the attendee or the guest numbers that we had in years prior, uh, we're going to lose that core. And so we've we've tried to show that, and and I think you're right. And I really feel like TF Expo is growing in that way, um, with support of people like you and you know other attendees that come out. And so, yeah. yeah. Um, now. Uh... What about uh, what are we going to look at as far as like panels and uh, things to okay. do at TF Expo this year? Yeah, yeah. So um, 
I don't know if we have any specific panels. Um, now, Friday night, uh, let's see, we are going to show the G1 movie um, with some special guests, um, and that's going to be actually very limited uh, uh, due to space and other things. Uh, it'll be it'll be uh, relegated to just the premium and our ultra uh, ticket holders. Um, now, he's on this uh, the showing of the of the '86 G1 movie. Um, Correct. A lot of uh, a lot of functions I've seen over the years have. Uh, you know, paired up with like one of their like local, smaller, uh, mm -hmm. locally owned theaters. Is is that what you're going to offer here, or is there like a separate like room? It's going to be at the hotel. It's not going to be at a theater. We did that um, in 2016. We rented out a theater. The and, Orpheum. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was awesome for sure. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, so I wouldn't doubt that in years to come we'll probably do something like that again. Okay. Um, but this year it'll be at the hotel. Um, again, that's going to be very limited to the ultra and uh, premium ticket holders. Uh, Saturday night, let's see, we'll be doing uh, the dinner again. So one thing that really drew me into TF Expo was we had this dinner party and uh, um, script reading um, during the dinner. And so we'll be doing that again. And uh, We'll allow. We'll have uh, auditions from attendees, and they'll be able to do some voice acting with the voice actors. So that'll be very cool. Um, my personal favorite is coming back this year as well. Um, we're gonna do the custom class again. Nice. Uh, yeah. Speaking of custom, custom classes. Oh hey, mine's, <laughs> uh, mine's right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't assemble mine. I'm I'm like I'm like this. I'm just going to keep it in the in the in the bag for. Uh, <laughs> I'm like yeah, I've I've got that, and then uh, yeah, I look at that. I still got one of these too. Uh, I don't, well, we get it on. The oh yeah, here. yeah. The little uh, Beast Wars so, Megatron plushie. Yeah, keychain. we should probably explain those a little bit. So for several years we had uh, the amazing Shirley Chung doing uh, exclusive. Um, key bots. You'll uh, back here. Actually, yeah. these are all mm -hmm. my key bots. Uh, we don't have that this year, unfortunately. But yeah, we've had some great exclusives over the years. Uh, this year, the custom class. Uh, we're gonna do. Um, actually, let's see. If there is. So, um, you guys, have you guys heard of the Wei Zhang Grimlock kit mm -hmm. at all? Yeah. Okay. So yep. what we've done is we've taken that kit and we've actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, these will all be pre-painted, these blue panels. We're going to do a G2 Grimlock with some custom stickers from from uh, one of our organizers there. And we'll assemble it just kind of like a, uh, a Gundam kit. And then uh, there will be some uh, paint markers there as well if you want to do panel lining or your own chrome highlights, whatever. Um, so that will be in the custom class. That That's looking to be a really good one and fun one. Uh, I've had fun with that over the years. Uh, I've u I used to do so, like I did the design on that headmaster you got, and then mm -hmm. we did a few years ago the the little uh, little race car dude. Um, but yeah, yeah so that's coming back. Hold the card up here for yeah, people to, so, to see. Yeah. Guardian. <laughs> that was the. Uh, oh man, that was a good time. That was so much fun making that. Yeah. Yeah, Javier. Uh, I need to. I need to reconnect with that guy. It's been several <laughs> years. He did three D modeling on that. I'd I'd draw things and paint and send it over to him, and then he would transform it into three D models. But, yeah. So that's returning. Um, we do have some exclusives this year. So um, it again kind of depends on your uh, ticket, uh, whatever package you buy. So like for our deluxe, our lowest class. Um, you will receive an exclusive watch bot. It's a transforming little watch. Oh, neat. Um, homage to you know some of the old 80s Transformers watches that we had as kids. Um, premium tickets um, and up will then receive a test tube, which is uh, just an ex uh, accessory uh, that will go with like your Perceptor toy. That's the idea there, um, as well as custom sticker sheet. Um the custom sticker sheet, I should say, is gonna. It's gonna be a fun one because it, it. I don't know if I'm supposed to say what it is. Let me just make sure that I'm in trouble for that here. 
don't want to don't want to don't want to burst the back. Rust affliction. So a certain rust affliction. Yeah. Then uh, Ultra Ticket holders will receive a Royals crown. So the Kansas City Royals uh, have an iconic crown design. Mm -hmm. So we've got a a, a 3D model of that that will fit your um, your King of the Dinobots. Oh, so no, that's so, neat. That's neat. So that should, <laughs> nice. So that should be fun. Yeah. Um, and then at the show, we'll have a few exclusive exclusives. Um, we have... Uh, not just one or two. We have three at show exclusives this year. Um, one for G1 fans, one for Beast Wars fans, and one for the Unicron, uh, Unicron trilogy fans. So um, I can't say what those are at the moment, but uh, it's going to be that'll be fun. So, so uh, where's uh, the best place to find out uh, information like that uh, about TF Expo? Great question. So, um, you can go to our Facebook page. That's probably the best place. Um, Look at it right now. Yeah, great. Um, you can find tickets on uh, Eventbrite. Uh, and also, just for your, uh, well, the two podcasts that we're doing, we've got a, an exclusive 10% off um, for those that, that use our code for um for the TFYLP listeners, if you'll just use the code TFYLP, you'll get ten uh, percent off your ticket. So, see, pay, uh, listening to uh, TFYLP pays off. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really appreciate that. Yes, it does. Yeah, be awesome. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great time. I'm really looking for it. The hotel seems really cool too. Some extra things to kind of do right around there. As well as being downtown Kansas City. Now I'm not from that area. I've only been there for work-related things, but my understanding is it's really close to some of the nightlife and things like that. So now I'm I'm wondering, uh, as a baseball fan, if there'll be uh, uh, a Royals game in town that weekend too. I, I can look. Let I me. don't actually know. I am not a baseball fan, so <laughs> I could not tell you. But yeah. Uh, I got that covered. Uh, All right, sweet. <laughs> oh, let me see. I, it, ironically, whenever uh, I lived in Central Florida, uh, way back when I was in college, uh, the Kansas City Royal Spring Training home was less than an hour away from me, and I went to many uh, nice. spring training games for the Royals. So, Funny uh, thing is, August third and fourth, which is the date of the Expo. Um, they're actually away, and they're facing my favorite team, the Minnesota Twins, so they will not be <laughs> at home. Dang it. Yeah, shoot. Fail. But there are plenty of other things to experience in Kansas City, for sure, one of which I will attest to is the barbecue there. So mm. Yes. Go get you some good it old is, Kansas City It barbecue. is a foodie town. It yeah. is definitely a foodie town, so I know, I'll be looking into that. I know sure. that's one of the things uh, that was a selling point for uh, people coming to the last BotCon was because Louisville is a is yeah. sort of a foodie town. Uh, Chicago, you know, all the BotCons and and all the con uh, conventions that's been there, that is definitely a foodie town. So if right. you're a fat guy like me, <laughs> or you like food, you yeah. don't have to be fat to like food. Now, what 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 are the dates again? August third and fourth. August 3rd and 4th. Okay, so for everyone listening, you have plenty of time, if you start now, to diet ahead of time. <laughs> that way you're ready to rock when it comes. And you can get your food, you know, baby, on time yeah. as soon as it comes up. That's right. That way you don't have to feel food, guilty baby. afterward. You're just going back up to, to what you were at. Yeah. Weight yeah. you were at before. So, yeah. so, you, so you're breaking even instead of gaining. <laughs> Absolutely. Good point. you got to start now. Good point. You know, use that, use that food money and use it to save up for uh, other goodies at the show. Yeah. Uh, going, uh, going, going back to the uh, to the movie showing. Uh, I remember uh, at the viewing at the Orpheum there in, in Wichita, uh, Michael Bell was there, uh, and, yep. and Michael Bell is uh, for a lot of you people who may not know was the voice of Prowl in the original Generation One uh, cartoon, and I believe he's been. The voice of several other characters too. Okay. Sideswipe. Uh, yeah, sideswipe. Yeah, Joe, buddy. Make sure we get sideswipe in there. That's my number one. Yeah. So. Uh, and just to have him there to watch the movie with us, 
and you know his character actually got off in it and i think he from my recollection he he made some kind of comment whenever yeah. whenever that came up on the screen he's like i'm dead or something oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, but yeah, that that was really awesome. Um, that uh, and he was just give some insight uh, after the movie was over, uh, as the credits were rolling. He was up there talking to to the uh, to the fans about his actual work on the film and and in the studio, uh, and that was that was really really special. I uh, I really dug that. Another great, yeah, another great guest. I mean, he was fantastic. He is another one that interacted not just outside of his panels, but at his panels. He was very, you know, come on, guys, what else you got? What else you got? Very leading and and wanting people to kind of step outside their comfort zone. And, uh, yeah, that TF Expo, man, I have a lot of great memories uh, from that show, and I've only been involved with it for five years now, like I said. I've got my, my uh, oldest son, uh, grew up on Transformers animated. And so David Kay, you know, for me is a is a Beast Wars guy, the in my opinion, the best Megatron voice. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll get shot for that. But you know, he's my favorite Megatron voice. And for him it, that was Optimus. And so I remember my son asking him, you know, what what was that like coming back to Transformers and going from a villain to a bad guy? And he looked him right in the eye and, you know, gave his opinion and my my oldest son, you know, really took that to heart. Like, wow, this guy actually cares about my question beyond, oh, well, it's just another job. That's kind of what we do. So, yeah, I, David K. Uh, whenever an, uh, an example, you know, I talked about Paul Eiding, what he did for me earlier. Uh, David K. Uh, whenever I sat down to have the interview, um, we we basically took over one of the panel rooms uh, uh, mm-hmm. for about an hour or so. And uh, as I was setting up, um, I was, uh, he was talking to me and, uh, and, and asking me, you know, talking to me about my friends and everything. And, uh, and at the time, uh, we were talking, I mentioned Chad Williams, because our friend Chad Williams, uh, he was, uh, had stage four cancer at that time. Mm. And, uh, you know, a lot of listeners know we've, we've lost him since, and uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, but what... Um, Gary did, or not, I'm sorry, not Gary, but uh, what David did uh, while I was setting up, he said, uh, uh, do you think you could call Chad for me right now? Wow. And I'm like, absolutely. Uh, so I, I, I called Chad, and whenever he answered the phone, I said, uh, I said, hey, Chad, I said, I have something for you. And he goes, uh, oh, yeah, what's that? And then I handed the phone off to David K. And yeah. David K. immediately cracks right into the Beast Wars Megatron voice, <laughs> and I could hear Chad oh, just absolutely uh, beside him. That? He was losing yeah. it uh, to be talking to uh, the David K. on the phone, and uh, they talked. Uh, I mean, it took me about twenty minutes to get set up, and they talked <laughs> the entire time, just shooting the breeze, and that made his day. And yeah. uh, David Kay is a very special, special guy. Yeah. Um, so, again, it just goes to show you how approachable these people are. Don't be afraid to go up to them. And the smaller con is a great, great place to do that. You just don't oh, get this. Uh, and that's one of the things I want to keep stressing to people watching the show that uh, that may be on the fence about going to TF Expo. Uh, is that when you go to the smaller cons, the the experience I think is more refined uh, and more pure than what you would get at a large right. con- a convention. Sure, you don't have like the uh, the big fancy you know uh, you know one off production runs of like a, a third right. party toy or or you're even not waiting in line for anything. Uh, you're not yeah. waiting in line for that. It's more for it's more a core experience for the fan, as in you get to uh like i said browse the dealer room with uh, with less hassle less stress um you know you get to, and and talk to fans and you get to meet more people uh i know uh, uh last uh, the last year or year before last actually is whenever uh, i got to go i wasn't able to go last year uh you know uh, standing to, uh, and talking to Aaron Haynes and her husband uh oh, okay. you know uh, made those made that connection you know made several friends uh through going to uh, TF Expo. Um, 
in TF Expo for uh, for myself and Orson uh, from the Louisville area uh, in Wichita was like a twelve hour drive one way. <laughs> Uh, it was, it, it's not a short drive. It was not a short drive for us and I don't regret it. I mean, the, the mere fact that I went back, uh, several times is, it, it should be a, a testament that I had a lot of fun. Uh, it's worth going to, uh, and it's worth, uh, worth, worth the investment in my opinion, especially if the guests are Absolutely. great. And this year, uh, you know, I'm not saying the previous years were, were any worse, but this year is just just a phenomenal guest list uh two of yeah. the, probably two of the most approachable guys in the transformers uh voice acting community well what a better like i don't think there's a better way really to even get uh maybe the next generation involved as well like uh you know if they they come out they'll be able to meet you know uh greg Berger's still very active in, in voice acting absolutely and, and still you know a prominent player with the uh with respect to transformers and and what better way to come out and kind of meet somebody that you know you you may idolize the character of, and maybe kind of get some insight behind you know how they're coming up with that voice or or whatever. I, I mean, that, it's just it's a good opportunity with a, a smaller show to do that type of thing that you, you just won't get at a, a, a Comic Con style show where you're again waiting in line for things hmm. instead of experiencing things. Uh, Jim, do you have any uh, uh, thoughts? right now and comments yeah i'm just kind of wondering um what uh what what are what are some examples of uh, some of the different uh vendors and dealers that we can expect to see at the show okay so i can't give out specific names at the moment but um we usually have a lot of local dealers definitely um like uh, in years past we've had hero haven and and uh we've had capture prey come out a, a couple times and I, I don't have any of those specifics on me right now on who's registered for that. That's not my department, if you would. But we usually get a few, definitely a lot of local guys. A couple of the organizers also have huge, uh, you know, Aaron, um, oh, my gosh, his last name is Aaron Rubin, uh, has a huge, like, mass collection that he, he, he trades and sells, and, and Transformers, obviously, are to, uh, to your content, really, but. Um, so not any like huge guys were like, Hey, big bad toy store is going to be here or anything like that. I think we're still quite a small show for that, but you know, we're definitely welcoming for those people. You know, you want to come out, you're going to have at least 200 people that are interested in buying stuff from you. Hey, hey, Duran, weren't, weren't you, uh, weren't you telling me about that, that captured prey one a while back? What, what was, what was the deal with that? What do you mean? I'm trying to see where you're going with that. <laughs> Well, I, was, I was I was thinking there was there was some kind of uh, some kind of thing about capture prey like, like they had great toys. Great oh, and you're going stuff. you're segueing into. <laughs> you're trying to segue something. Yeah, uh, you got to understand, yeah. Jim. He's a little bit vague sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Just beating it over the head, real quick. Yeah. Wham. Uh, but yes, uh, capturepray.com, great toys, great prices, great service, capturepray.com. You can save even more with uh, orders of $150 or more at capturepray.com. Uh, you know, that's, I, I'm not sure if he's actually going to be there this year. Um, last I talked, he was kind of on the fence because um, right now conventions are uh, really difficult for him to do uh, for several reasons. Um, I know he's going to TFCon. Uh, in Canada, or I, I think he may he may just be going as an attendee. I don't know, uh, but I know I definitely know he's going to TFCon USA. But outside of that, I don't even know if he's doing any other cons at all this year. Really? Um, Say yes, Orson. Say yes. So yes. Orson, come on, Orson. <laughs> More you calling Orson. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, right now I'm saying. Uh, I'm probably not likely going to be able to go myself, but I do want to go. Um, I'm not even sell you on the idea. Man, we're doing a terrible. (laughs) No, no. Uh, that, but I am trying to, to make it work because, um, part of the reason I wasn't able to go before, um, uh, today was that, um, we had planned a family vacation. We were going to, uh, to, uh, uh, Virginia beach as a, as a family vacation. Um, 
wanting to take a non transformer related vacation. I, I guess if, if people <laughs> can can relate to that, you know, it's like Absolutely. usually the vacation time for a lot of transformer fans is relegated to okay, when's the cons? You know, <laughs> um, we were actually going to go to Virginia Beach, but because of a recent uh, uh, stoppage of work. Uh, that I had to endure, which was roughly two weeks, um, I lost well over a grand, uh, and so, uh, in, in, in wages. So, yeah, that put a halt on our family vacation. We've already had to cancel our rev- reservations. Uh, so that's not happening, and I'm probably going to be able to reschedule my vacation time. So right now I am eyeing TF Expo, but I'm not, I'm not going to say right now I'm definitely going because yeah, I yeah. don't know. But, but it is, on my radar now um we'll hear that we're at that kind of top of the list yeah it's if you're not there hopefully your fans will uh yeah the, uh, the only them. reason i wasn't going is for, for family reasons before and now uh, yeah. uh and now that's that's that, that's that may be changing um but i can say that that tf expo is is a worthy uh great convention um you know i've like i said i've been what three times now and you know that's that's several hundred mile trip uh, trip for me. It's a long haul for yes, you. Yes, it yeah. is. Yes, it is. Are and, we? How much closer is Kansas City for you now? Uh, I'm wanting to say roughly four hours. So we could probably make it there uh-huh. in nine to ten hours. You know, given restroom breaks and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's pretty much heading out 64 uh, till we hit Louisville. Or I'm sorry, until we hit St. Louis, and then it's a straight shot on straight over uh, KC. Yeah. And I, I do, when I say straight shot, I do mean straight shot because the roads are very, very straight. Yeah, you're still in the plains there, yeah. for sure. That, you know, Definitely. from someone who's not around that area, uh, you know, I'm used to lots of curves and lots of hills uh, in this in this location. Uh, and then we get out there, and you have those rolling hills, but lots of straight roads. And as you can just see for miles, and the Great Plains is just... It, it's 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 beautiful it's, it's beautiful. it was uh, something now i don't think in kc you get that as much it's a little more hilly in that area uh, yeah but um you know if you're Still coming beautiful city yeah if you're coming from the west you probably pass through that but also if you're coming from the west you probably live in that so <laughs> it won't be as new to you as it, w- it was to some eastern hacker like me uh <laughs> um so, uh, let's let's kind of talk uh, some more about um, where people can get more info, information mm-hmm. uh, about TF Expo, some more specifics. Uh, we'll wrap that up, and then we'll talk uh, for a few minutes uh, with you specifically, Donnie, uh, with uh, some of your favorites uh, in, uh, in Transformers. Um, yeah. But before we do that, uh, TF Expo, uh, how much... Are the pre-registrations and, and, and tickets at the door, what are the specifics on those? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. Yeah, so let me just pull that up because I don't want to misstate something there. So I'm just going right into uh, event right here and you know, just pull up TF Expo and... Should pop right. Might have to edit this part out. This is uh, embarrassing. Huh? <laughs> it, it happens. That doesn't sound good. Here we go. Okay. okay. So you can go to uh, tfexpo.net. Um, it is .net, and then you'll see right at the top you'll have tickets available and it's got the the pricing structure as well and the breakdown of what you'll get out of it so like a a basic ticket which is just admit admission is going to be 20 bucks uh the deluxe the first kind of package is 75 um premium is going to run you 120 and ultra runs you 175 and um i should say that all three packages include a t-shirt um all three include that watch bot exclusive we talked about and then you kind of you know, slant towards the uh, premium ultra where you've got, got the test tube exclusive. Ultras get that royal crown exclusive. Um, premium and ultra will have that Friday night 
uh, movie and Q&A that we talked about and the Saturday dinner and script reading. Um, the ultras, this is pretty cool. So if you're in the ultra package, you get to sit at the table with one of the uh, guests. Oh, wow. And so that's pretty limited. We've always done that. Great success with it. Uh, lots of good experiences from that. Um, and as we've talked at length uh, on this show about kind of the people that we have coming in, that'll be a good experience. You know, the um, last time I remember something like that happening at a big convention like BotCon uh, mm-hmm. was the BotCon in Lexington. Uh, d- uh, they had the, the, the dinner, uh, mm-hmm. and several of the guests, uh, they, they just went out and sat with the fans. You know, they didn't have like their oh, own, really? their own special table where they, that's the only place they sat. And I remember myself, uh, uh my ex at the time, um, and, uh, and I believe in St. Galvatron and a couple other people, we were sitting there and Blue Man Kuma the voice of Tigatron from Beast Wars. Uh, yeah. uh, Pauline uh, Newstone, uh, I, I think that's her, that's her name. She's the voice of Air Razor. Uh, she, uh, she came and sat down. And then Simon Furman sat down right next to me. And we were all... Like a vast just, predatory bird. Yeah, we were... Yeah, yeah Air Razor was... Uh, 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 her. But... Um, but... Furmanism. But... Uh, it was just awesome sitting and just shooting the breeze with, sure. with these celebrities. They, they just came and sat down at our table. We were already sitting there and they came and sat down. Um, that was the last time I experienced something like that at any convention. Uh, and to see that as a feature of this convention mm-hmm. is really awesome. I like that. Idea. Yeah, definitely worth the, the small, you know, jump in packages there to, to get that opportunity. I know that, uh, for me, uh, Sitting at a table with Casey Collier was a great, like, kind of starter to uh, still developing friendship. I mean, we still keep in contact over Facebook and other things, but uh, getting to talk to somebody really in depth about what they do and love and their passion, you know, it's you, it's priceless. You may pay a little bit for it up front, but uh, it's definitely. Definitely Memories that'll last a lifetime, and you may yeah, even, exactly. you, who knows, you may even make a connection that will last for you years, might. like yeah. like Paul Lighting and myself. You know, it just, That's uh, exactly it's right. just amazing. You know, you can sit and and share a dinner. You know, was it goes back to the old uh, old days. You know, uh, come sit, break bread with me, and and you know we can uh, we yeah. can talk. Yeah. Um, you you really connect with people, and they and you see you. You talk to them and see them on a more personal level rather than professional, uh, usually, and it, it's just it's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So uh, the link is on the web page as well. Um, if you click on tickets, it'll take you to the Eventbrite. Uh, my Eventbrite keeps wanting to put my local city in here, and it's driving me crazy. So I know that uh, when I've searched in the past, as long as you don't have a location, you just type in TF Dash Expo. Um, or hyphen, and uh, it'll usually pull up TF Expo 2018. Um, again, Friday and Saturday, August 3rd and 4th. Uh, it's a unique experience, I think, uh, when it comes to the Transformers fandom. For now, sure. there's so, there's nothing on Sunday this year, is that? There's not. Great? Okay, that's correct. Just Friday and Saturday. Yeah. That actually goes good for me because I could use that as a travel day. Travel day. See, see, right. see, you're already starting to talk me into it. Shame on you. <laughs> I want to get you to come on out uh, and maybe bring a certain prey guy with you. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to try and see if I can slap him around a bit. You know, I don't know. <laughs> whatever you can do. Um, so yeah, uh, again, if you want those prices, TF. Uh, expo.net our website you'll see all the latest and greatest um, as well as our our um, Facebook page TF Expo check that out we usually post pictures from shows past um, oh I should say that the three packages also get a signature from the talent included as well so there's um, no extra added cost to that yeah only if you do more than one signature you know if that you have them doing multiples you have to pay the talent for for that so well that makes uh, sense get, too yeah i mean that's right that's why they do those shows right so yeah um yeah and i'm i'm so excited for this show i'm excited for kansas city 
I'm excited to see Greg Berger again, to meet Paul Eiding, especially after your little heartfelt message about him or experience with him. That's amazing, uh, you know, that he came through with for you like that. And then Casey Collier coming back. That that guy is my boy. I love that guy. So I'm excited to see him as well. I think I've met him a couple times at uh, BotCon. He's, he is awesome. He is just down to earth and just amazing. He's a great guy, so great human being. Absolutely. Artist on Optimus Prime. So if you're reading that, that's, you know, he does a lot of that. So Awesome. Uh, Jim, do you have any uh, questions about TF Expo before we move on? You know, uh, nothing's, nothing's really coming to mind. <laughs> Jim, come to TF Expo and enjoy the uh, indoor water park. Yeah, you, know, you, you mentioned the, the, the water it, park. It would be the first time he's had a bath all year. <laughs> Got it. Kind of scrape off the outer later. Uh, 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 we've talked about the, the, the guests, and we've talked about you know the, the venue a bit. And I, just, I, I can't think of anything. Okay. It, it, it all sounds fantastic. Awesome. So, Donnie, uh, let's let's talk a little about a bit about you as a collector. Okay. Uh, how long have you been a Transformers fan and collector? Well, fan. I mean, since uh, eighty. Uh, four, I guess. Um, uh, I was young lad around those days. I, I can still remember my first Optimus Prime uh, when I got that. Um, I remember losing that same Optimus Prime uh, in a move. and uh, So I, I've been a fan since G1. Um, I followed it. Uh, I lost touch at G2 and stuff like that. And, and that just came from living in a small town, not really having cable or anything like that. So um, I watched the G1 cartoon religiously uh, until I couldn't anymore. And then when Beast Wars came back, I watched that show like crazy, uh, you know, a young teen or whatever in those days. And he didn't really buy a lot of toys, though, at that time, um, but really enjoyed the storytelling there. Um, kind of lost it at, when... Um, not Car Robots, what was it called here? R.I.D. Uh, that kind of lost me for a while. I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, the 2.0 and, or the, the first one? The, the 1.0, oh, yeah. Okay. The, robots. Yeah, Car Robots. That that show was just not... Wasn't but they had great toys. That's interesting. <laughs> was, it, was it the... The, the cartoon series specifically that kind of yeah out. just uh, i don't know if it just really didn't uh appeal to me i think was is probably the best way to say it was not a big fan so um came back uh in 07 with the movie was like oh man i love these things again i kind of started collecting a little bit of vinyl techs and and things like that i'm a car guy i love cars and th- i think it transformers really influenced that as well because i was a huge fan of the the countash and and uh, Sideswipe's my favorite character, so probably because of that. And um, so, yeah, so for a long time. And really got back into kind of the toy collecting things around 2007. Um, uh, I like to customize. That's kind of one of my things. I love to paint and highlight and things like that. Um, so for a long time, that was what I was doing through Transformers Animated and things like that. Uh, so... Collection-wise, I've got kind of random stuff. Um, my shelf behind this shelf behind me really just is probably my main thing. Where I've got Lost Light crew. I love the comics, mm-hmm. so that's my main Transformers media at the moment is uh, the Lost Light stuff. Huge fan of that. Huge fan of the Nick Roche and the uh, Roberts and all that good stuff. Uh, Optimus Prime. I don't know if I can. So I've got my Optimus Prime doing the, the mean walk from uh, hmm. from uh, that cover. but. Um, so what what are your I'm feelings kind of, uh, on the uh, IDW uh, reboot, I guess? I don't oh. know. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm torn. Four, so, so I, I usually stay about, about three issues back, back uh, just, just so, so I, I never kind of run, run out of content, content to, to, to read. Um, and so, so I'm not to that, that point yet, yet but... but um, I don't know. I'm not excited. I, I I don't actively follow the comics much to my my uh, detriment. But the thing is, is I've I've heard so many people that are up in arms over the 
uh, uh, over the upcoming, uh, I don't know, uh, is it a reboot or is it, uh, you know, that's I, what I'm hearing. I thought I saw, don't quote me on it, but I thought I saw where James Roberts says he, he was, he was done as well or moving on or something like that. I thought I saw that on Twitter or something. Um, so I, I think that it is going to be a, a reboot and I'm not excited about that. Yeah. Um, been well, following the comics since, uh, gosh, 2010 i think is when I they've had in. such the comics in the last several years have had such an impact on on the toys themselves oh, too uh i mean we've had so many uh lines i mean like what was it the generations line uh right before combiner mm-hmm. wars was almost you know always had that packed in comic and even some yes. of the early combiner war stuff had the packed in comic um yeah. it was just it drove toy sales for, for the longest time. Uh, and now I think we're starting to see more of a shift toward, uh, I guess, the, uh, you know, propping it up on the live action movies again, uh, with Bumblebee coming up now. Yeah, and, so, yeah. um, and I, I kind of wonder what's that. We're only, we have yet to get a trailer for it. We're only a few months out. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, I, I really have my reservations about this movie. I'll, I'll likely go see it because, well, it's, it's, yeah. it's got Transformers on it, but I'm not expecting much out of it. I'm really uh, not. The, 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 the date is what? December something? Isn't it? For I the, yes. don't recall. I think you're right. It, here it is. It's almost June. I mean, it, not even a teaser gonna, trailer yet. They're going to start hyping the movie. They got to release something, a teaser. Or... I thought there yeah, was I a teaser know. out though. No. Was there not? I got, got footage one. Hmm. That's, that's, that's why I'm kind of worried. That they they just took Transformers Seven off the off the slate for next year. It's it's yeah. It's, they're ending kind of the that universe, if you will. I think. Well, and I think they've re- removed Transformers Six from uh, uh, the title of Bumblebee as well. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 They have, and they're they're I guess trying to push this Bumblebee movie as kind of a soft reboot or a hard reboot or, or something yeah i don't know uh, i don't know if they're that that that's that therein lies my my reservations about this film is because uh we as fans hardcore fans of this franchise if we don't know certain things about this and we're, we don't know we don't understand what they're doing kind of yeah. makes you wonder do they even know what they're doing <laughs> you know, as, as big of a thing as this is probably going to be, and as close as it is, and the fact that we have little to no information, that in itself is worrisome. Because like, like, like an upcoming toy line or something, you know, we would have seen, you know, a, a, a prototype or a Chinese video review or, 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 or something. Well, what are we getting? Aren't we just getting the studio series? That's really what we're seeing at the moment, right? Yeah. And from yeah. what I understand, yeah. the Bumblebee Bumblebee movie uh, toys are actually going to be intertwined with the studio series are releases, they? I believe. I, I'm um, not even sure. keeping I, up I, I with it. He's going to be a VW bug. Yeah, avoid Bum- uh, the Bumblebee actual studio series toy right now. I hate that toy. Oh. I'm, uh, I, I know I've said it many times, I, and I've still got the receipt, and I've still got the box. I'm thinking about <laughs> taking mine back. I hate it that much. Wow. Uh, I mean, the top just, uh, it it falls apart in your hands while you're transforming it. Now, I, I, I saw the other yeah. day, uh, I, I guess there's going to be a redeco of that one coming out. It's, it's like like the, the rusted. Yeah, but one. it's a Hong Kong or China exclusive or oh, something. Is other. It? Yeah, oh. it's going to be oh, very limited. Nice. Uh, I don't do any of the calling movie figures, labels. really. So. Calling rapper labels. Well, I, I picked up the <laughs> Toys R Us Thundercracker, uh, which yeah. uh, was actually, uh, it's actually a really good toy. Um, and it's also got the removable head. You can put a Titan Master on it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So, uh, and I that put the Headmaster, I, wouldn't he? Yeah, I actually put um, uh, Overboard's Titan Master on him, and the yeah, blue right. is almost a good match, almost that's a perfect cool. match for it. So, uh, yeah, um, that that's actually really good. And then I've got uh, the Studio Series Grimlock. Um, and oh, even yeah. if you if you're not a fan of Age of Extinction, that is just a beautiful, beautiful toy. Um, really? God yes. And then the Blackout, I've got Blackout. While he, I That's don't think he's perfect, I think he's he's still a really good figure. Better. That's a yeah. Massive chopper though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, oh I've God. actually got him in chopper mode here. Let me, yeah. let me see if I can grab him. Because I I saw pictures of the of the side by side of Blackout and Grimlock both. 
and just in the helicopter mode, it's like, oh my god. Yeah. You, um, you want to transform it and then climb into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Let me fix I scroll. primarily just focus on the comic stuff, so I'm not real. I don't know. If I'm if I'm not getting it from Hasbro, then I'm going. You know, Mastermind Creations is probably my number one uh, brand at the moment that I'm I've been collecting. Trying to find yeah. something that is comparable. Well, this is. Holy cow! Yeah. Right. I mean, he's he's gigantic. You know, in it's in like helicopter. An old leader class. Uh, I want to say it's a little bit bigger, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find something. Like I said, it's a freaking behemoth. Okay. <laughs> I'll grab a G1 mini bot here. Would, and would, would you say roughly similar size? Here's like a, like a G1 Cosmos. Player. Here's G1 Cosmos. And this is leader side blackout. You know, he's like, yeah, he's <laughs> ginormous. And then yeah, uh, like underneath, yeah, then underneath yeah. Uh, the Scorponok. That uh, huh. that comes they out. They kept that one feature where Scorpionock slides up in his mm -hmm. slides up his tail. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> almost looked like a playset that was to scale with the figure. Yeah, that's insane. That yeah. is insane. That's cool. I mean, he's he's not not bad for a fifty dollar toy. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, now now for for comparison, and th and those of you who uh, are who are into third party, uh, this is leader size blackout. Uh, if you aren't, uh, and you saw the size comparison with it, if you aren't familiar with uh, the Zeta toys, uh, you know, you got their Bruticus that's coming out, and they've also got two of the aerial bots that are out. This is Fireflight. Oh. Yeah. This is Fireflight. He is an arm. <laughs> that's gonna be massive. Yeah. So uh, we're talking Titan class then. Yeah, we're uh, it's it's he's easily Titan class in uh, uh, in combiner mode, uh, and yeah, you know, these guys are like fifty fifty five bucks. Yeah. Oh wow. You know so, and I think the main body uh, like Silverbolt and and Onslaught is going to be slightly over a hundred. Uh, for for just the main bot, but you gotta understand they're they're coming with all the little combiner bits like the fists and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, and I mean, oh, so that so that's not incorporated into the into the. Figure, uh, so. Not this one, no. Um, but okay. it's it's still. I mean, it's got all these bells and whistles. I mean, you got the opening cockpit. Sure. Uh, you know the the landing okay. gear that retract. I mean, it's it's just. I, I'm blown away by them. Yeah. Uh, for I, for it, the price you get, somebody... you can't complain. Didn't some of the other third parties over the years uh, incorporate like the the hands into part of the figure as opposed to? It's not figure? as common as you would think. Uh, there, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that there's there's some that uh, there's some there are some that do, um, but it's not as common as you think. Uh, I know. Uh, well, let's see here. Did um, I don't oh, think crap fans project do it? Uh, I, 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 I know they're I know their uh, Dino King did not. It had separate pieces. Um, but like they're Bruticus and Menace, or not Bruticus, uh, Menasaur. Oh, the uh, the uh, Fans Project uh, M3, I believe is what it was. I, I think know. it had integrated, uh, I think it was all integrated with Motormaster, if I'm not mistaken. You're right, yeah, you're right. They're, they're Diesel. Right. Uh, and, and we all know, uh, in my opinion, Diesel was one of the biggest, uh, faux pas in third party history in my opinion. Oh yeah. Uh, that thing was so over engineered it was it was crazy. It's still in uh, combined mode in, in another room. Yeah, right? I I had Love mine it, roughly a month to two months and I sold it because I'm like this thing is not <laughs> it's not fun to play with. It's it's hard. It's horrible. That's why I like it though, is it's super complicated and you have to I don't and, know, it's like a Rubik's cube. I my <laughs> thing is though is if I feel like I'm afraid to break it then it's not mm. fun to toy, uh, uh, not a fun toy to play with. You know, yeah. I don't want to spend, you know, over a hundred dollars on, yeah. you know, on on a toy that essentially is just going to stay in one mode on a shelf, and I'm not going to mess with it. You know, I, I don't want to yeah. feel, uh, you know, if it's like this Firefly. You know, the other day I just felt froggy and grabbed him off my shelf and started uh, messing with him, put him in solid and, build. Yeah, solid build. You know, I've I've got. You know, I pointed out before the show, you know, I've got the uh, um, 
the KFC, KFC. Uh, Snapdragon, or I'm sorry, Ape Face here. Um, you know, I, I do have some, I did have some issues with it, but it's still yep. generally a solid figure. Uh, I think it was mainly because of my ham handedness that it, that it broke. Uh, but fortunately, I think the strip screw, I think I can fix that with uh, with some glue and, and just reworking that. And then, um, fortunately, I, I know somebody who who can get me an extra finger for the for the oh, gorilla mode. Nice. Uh, you know, <laughs> Orson. <laughs> yeah. I'd um, say my thing right now is this guy. This is... This is my baby right now. Oh, yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, Mastermind uh, Prowl. Beta. Or beta. Yeah, that's the Drift. I, I'm or is one that of drift? those I'm uh, sorry. losers that actually does enjoy Drift. So that's uh, Mastermind's got my heart at the moment. They're, they're pulling all the right strings. Absolutely. All the comic stuff. Uh, so. I'm I'm a fan of Mastermind stuff as well. I've got... It's solid. Um, I, I owned the Tantrum from the first Feral Rex. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, at the time that I owned it, uh, that was around the time I had my accident and I wound up having to sell it to pay bills. But oh. in the meantime, right now I haven't, I haven't picked it up. It's still in my pile at Capture Prey or I'm sorry, my stasis pod. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a Nero Rex, uh, waiting yeah. on me and I'm, I, I am jazzed about that. Nice. Um. Let's see here. What else do I have? Uh, Ocular Max is technically Mastermind, isn't it? Uh, I've got their their Cosmos, which is uh, Omni, the uh, the masterpiece sized uh, Cosmos. Uh, it's really are good. Are you mostly a masterpiece collector? Or are you just all because mostly just, uh, now like Chug guy. Um, mostly now I'm masterpiece. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I do collect uh, the the mainline stuff. I collect the like the Titan Returns and the uh, mm. uh, Power of the Primes and everything. I believe after Power of the Primes though, I'm I'm pretty much going to be done with uh, the mainline line. Uh, simply because I don't like what I'm hearing about what's coming up afterwards. The evergreen uh, the stuff. Ever, evergreen stuff. If yeah. uh, if this is a lot of what we're looking at, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've yeah. got the side swipe, but that's it. And yeah, this just this thing. Swipe. I mean, it's a good desk bot to sit there and just have something to fiddle with. Yeah, uh, I'm holding up the uh, Cyber Battalion Optimus Prime for those of you who can't see. Um, it's a it's a decent desk bot. I don't regret buying it, but I'm not. Pro I'm probably not going to buy any more. It's just yeah. It's it's just not for me. That's where um, I'm at as well. I've slowed way down on on mainline. I did buy. Uh, I'll buy their combiner stuff just because I don't have a lot of the combiners and I don't buy a lot of third party combiners anymore. Well, so, like I'll get the monster bots and stuff like that. But yeah, I gave up on third party combiners uh, simply because they were so darn expensive. And then here comes Zeta Toys with these, uh, you know, sub hundred dollar limbs that are leader class size. And you know, it's yeah. You know, I mean, look at this. I mean, the jet mode. There's, yeah. there's no floppy on here. You know, it's never seen a jet do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, turbulence. I just don't know why I keep it. That's that's yeah. my thing now. Is I'm getting to that stage of man, I don't know if I, if I'm not displaying it, I don't know if I want to keep it. That's another thing too, uh, and I actually mentioned that the other day at uh, the recent Kentucky meetup. Um, I'm seriously thinking about having another massive purge. Simply mm -hmm. because I, in the room that I'm in right now, I don't have uh, room to expand. Uh, and the room that I do have is starting to fill up really quickly. Uh, he you hasn't know, been able to find the exit in about three weeks. And he really has <laughs> he's to go to the bathroom. In it stinks in here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and especially whenever you got big boys like, uh, well, let's see here. Uh, that guy oh, there, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> taking up shelf space. And you know, if I get my camera back on the um but when you got guys like that taking up shelf space and then uh you know i'm gonna have the 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 superion and the bruticus of these guys be huge, yeah. uh, you know from what i understand the zeta toys version of bruticus is going to be bigger bigger than the the unique toys which is the other third party uh version that's out uh now uh i think theirs is called ragnaros and then the zeta's is called uh, Armageddon. Uh, somebody took a picture of the Unique Toys version, and it had Masterpiece Starscream standing on the shoulder of this thing. Masterpiece really? Star Starscream, and the and the Zeta Toys version is actually going to be bigger. Uh, 
That's insane. Uh, a little bit bigger. Uh, yes, yeah, you, the... you you will need a dolly to bring it into your home. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, the the Zeta Toys Vortex, which I actually have right up here, but he's kind of buried, is roughly the size of uh, of Blackout in helicopter mode. Here, wow. uh, so yeah, whenever you're handling this, uh, and I'm, I plan on maybe getting that vortex down and turning it into, into helicopter soon and taking some comparison photos. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, they're roughly the same size. Who knows? I think it might even be a little bit bigger than this. Wow. Um, and and it, there's there's like none of this on that toy. Good boy, yeah. None of none of that. It's it, you you can take that toy and turn it. It three, looks like a jet. It looks like a, it looks like a helicopter. It looks like a, jet, a blast yeah. off. Looks like a, a, a space shuttle. The swindle looks like a full on Humvee. Uh, even you flip it upside down. The swindle has an axle, a, a turning axle, uh, and and rack and pinion steering and everything. It's just like that, that, that harkens wow. back to the old alternators. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. the Zeta Toys Brawl uh, has working treads. Uh, they are a pain. Oh in the, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they are a pain in the ass during transformation. Um, there's not a uh, really solid way to lock them in. Uh, the best way is to maybe remove 16 links from the treads and, and everything. Uh, but that being said, you can still enjoy the toy for, uh, with, uh, with the treads as is. Um, but yeah, I mean, to have a fully functional tank, you know, you turn it upside down. There's no, uh, there's no robot kibble up underneath. You got fully working treads. The turret turns, the little hatches on the turret opens, uh, the, the turret will raise up and down it. I mean, it's just the detail. I'm, I can't get over them. And for 50 bucks, 55 bucks, roughly yeah, for, uh, for, for that's those definitely bots. value. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that really got me back onto the third party combiner uh, train. Uh, I was just, I was done with spending $600 on, on a, yeah. a total combiner. And then when it's all said and done, you're like, yeah. It doesn't look way, uh, the way I wanted it. Uh, at least with these, I'll spend less, and each of the individual bots look good enough that I would keep them individually if I didn't like the combined mode. Uh, so, that being said. Mm. Um, mm. So, you guys have any uh, uh, other thoughts? That Anything that you might want to talk about real quick? Donnie? Uh, TF Expo. Go to TF Expo. <laughs> go to TF Expo.net. I highly recommend it, and I'm hoping to be there. I'm not going to. I'm not going to commit right now because we I don't hope want, you're going to be there. Too. I, I don't want to be one of those people who says, "Yeah, I'm going to be there," and then not show up. You know? That's so, fair. Uh, so, but I I'd love it, to see you there. It is going to. It is uh, on my radar. Uh, Jim, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, yes. Uh, re regarding what what uh, Donnie just said, uh, I want to just offer a uh, a heartfelt ditto. <laughs> Thanks, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, uh, don't forget the 10% off coupon, too. I mean, I yes. guess you could rewind, but yeah. uh, just for listening to this show, you can get 10% off your ticket. So TFYLP is the code, and it will uh, get you in on that. Awesome. Oh, I should say yeah, right now we're doing, a, we're doing a giveaway on our Facebook. I didn't mention that. Um, we're almost at 1,000 likes on the Facebook page, uh -huh. and the 1,000th like, we're going to do a, a drawing for a skiff. So you'll, a Moss you'll Toy skiff. skiff. Oh, yes. awesome. Yes, so that is yeah. awesome. Like our page, you know, all that good stuff. Like, comment, check our stuff out. Check the website out, the Facebook page. You'll kind of see the good times that we've had in years past. And and, and also check out TF Expo uh, August. Was it second and third? Did you, did you say third and fourth? Or third and fourth? Okay. Um, yep. I, as far as I know, it doesn't conflict with any cons either. So mm. you you sh should have no. Ex Excuse, well, I'm going to X Con because I I can't go to that one. No, right. well, there's no con, no other con at this particular time, yep. and it's a full month, month and a half, I believe, before TF Con USA. So plenty of time to rest up and and re rejuvenate your funds to go Are to that you one. In September too. this year, I thought they usually uh, do October or something. I believe it's October. Uh, let me, uh, oh well, double. then we'll you got several months. Yeah. You get or a yeah. couple months. You yeah, Definitely. all of August, all of September, half of October, just. Come check us out, August third and fourth. Um, as you've heard, you're gonna have a good time. I can I can pretty much promise you that. I 
I, I love our show. I, I keep going back for that reason because I get to interact with those people and get to meet new people too. So absolutely. That, that sounds like it's going to be a pretty, pretty epic weekend anyway. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, August 3rd, you know, you go to the show and then after the close of the show for the day, you can head up to the local theater, go see the premiere of Winnie the Pooh that comes out that weekend. Oh, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Christopher, Christopher Robin. Robin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, the, uh, and then, and then those characters right look so the darn creepy the next to me. Day for the second day of the show, so I mean, the the whole weekend you can just feel but, like a kid again, and it's fantastic. I love it. Or 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 you could buy, you know, the uh, the ultra package and premium package. Come to the G1 movie. You know, that oh, yeah. that private screening. You could, you could do that Friday night instead. I might uh, I might slip into that one, I think. So, Right? Or Christopher Robin, which, whichever you choose. That's, I, so, so, you know, so I'd rather so take a look. I'd, I'd rather weekend. take in the view from Lookout Mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So either way, it's just a stellar weekend. There's, there's no weekend. possible way to lose here. Absolutely. That's right. Fantastic. I'm All right, good. guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up uh, for this show. Cool. Um, we, we lost Jack Bruner. His Skype was saying... You know, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so bye, Jack. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you uh, did, love did anybody, what we... did anybody try mouth to mouth? Ooh, ooh, no. no. I wasn't looking to do that. Yeah, no. Okay. No. Oh, he, he's lost cause then. No, we'll, okay. If Christian was on here, we'd just have him do that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but if you love what we do here on TFYLP, please go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Help us out each month. Uh, you know, uh, our Patreon levels are there, uh, different levels of uh, 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 helping us out. Um, you know, and the funds that you that you give each month uh, help us do upgrades to our equipment, you know, like the computer that I'm currently having built, uh, you know, it uh, pays for new microphones when we, uh, when we can, um, you know, all kinds of great stuff. And we are here because of you, the fans, and we are a fan service, uh, for you. And that's how we keep oh, going. That because, kind of fan service. Huh. Uh, but, uh, but you know, with, without the fans, we could not continue. Podcasting, uh, is not cheap. You know, I mean, to to do a good quality uh, audio and video podcast, uh, you know, you got server fees involved. You got all kinds of yeah. stuff, uh, and it's a little bit beyond my means to do uh, by myself anymore. I know whenever we first started out, it wasn't that bad because a lot we had a lot of free options. Uh, you know, especially with Google Hangouts, and whenever Google Hangouts kind of went away, that you know, it started getting really pricey really quick. Um, but thankfully, uh, we got a lot of great fans here on TFYLP, and, and we continue each and every month because of you. And we thank, have a heart, heartfelt thanks uh, to each and every one of you who continue to support us each month. Uh, also, ch- again, check out our sponsor, CaptureProy.com, uh, as well as Ripped Apparel. If you go to Ripped Apparel um, and you see great shirts on there, kind of like, like this one right here that I'm wearing. the, yeah, uh, the uh, Fast the, Transformers yeah. shirts. Yeah, they oh, nice. they have some of the best transformer shirts. We had uh, Paul Fremel, uh, uh, one of the, uh, the guys behind Ripped Apparel. We had him on several weeks ago. Um, if you go there and they don't have a current deal going that's better, you can use the promo co- uh, code TFYLPPOD and save ten percent on your order from Ripped, uh, Ripped Apparel and TFYLP. Um, follow us on Twitter. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you have any comments or questions about the show. Uh, you can comment or, or send me a direct message at TFYLP on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, we'll see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Take care, gang. Thank you.